Hello and welcome to Stocks to Watch, where we shed light on the latest opportunities in the financial markets and in the business world. I am Munir Barazi, your business analyst and host, and today I'm joined by Richard Nielsen, the founder and CEO of My Pet Go, which helps pet owners take care of the health and longevity of their pets through gamification. Hello, Richard. It's good to have you with us today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I appreciate uh, being on your show. Absolutely. So uh, we would like to hear the story behind how My Pet Go started. So tell us the story from the very start, from the idea stage. What inspired you uh, to start this company? Right. So in my previous life, I worked in media and I should say digital media. And I guess towards the end of that, I, I successfully built it up over a decade, sold it off to a German uh, media and tech conglomerate. Then during the knowledge transfer, it was very evident that it was hard for us to fight as a publishing group, right? So we consolidated with their assets. We had 500 media brands, some very well-known brands, but it was hard to fight the metas and the TikToks that were on the rise and the Googles and essentially all the platform players, right? And so what I thought was, you know, I probably should, I've built this, I've sold it off. It's time to leave. Data was becoming very important for any business model. We were fighting against these guys that had all the data. You know, they created none of the content, which is very expensive to curate. And it was clear to me that I have to leave. I have to get into something where I can harness data in a non-evil way, right? And um, and I looked at the pet sector. I was a pet parent. You know, my my dog Caesar, a ten-year-old Maltese. At the time he was six, he's, he's a big inspiration. I wanted to understand him better. I looked at the macro and the micro, and I saw that a lot of Gen Z and, and millennials choose to have non-human kids, and they want to have sort of fur babies or, or you know, their their uh, their version of a human baby, which is, is, is a cat or a dog or maybe something else. And so I saw this vast opportunity in, in helping to digitalize this very analog industry and in understanding how the pets are feeling physically and emotionally, leveraging the data that I felt we were lacking in, in, in sort of the previous business model to a degree. So, so that was kind of how it came, came around. I want to help and understand my own dog, but also opportunistic entrepreneur who sees this gap in the market where there is this this vast opportunity to digitalize this this particular field so in a way you you changed industry you saw an opportunity in the pet uh healthcare market if you will and you had the data or would like to leverage the data and uh, built this app if you will would you like to tell us more about this app and how gamification works on it Sure, sure. So, so the the idea is, if you think of us as a aura ring, which is a smart ring, or a whoop strap, which is a kind of wristband, but but it kind of tracks certain health markers, or an Apple Watch or Fitbit, which was, I suppose, the original gangster. We've created something that looks like that. Um, it's essentially a health monitor that goes around the neck of dogs. So we're dogs only at the moment. And it has sensors that you can see on the back here and also non-intrusive sensors inside of the wearable. And what it does is that it reports on health markers. So we have four vitals, HRV, PRV, respiration, temperature. Then we look at behavior traits like sitting, laying, standing, running, walking, step count, calories burnt, you know, all of these different different uh, interesting topics. And with these data, we then report that in a layman way so you understand that's through a smartphone application, iOS or, or Android. And, and we tell you when a value is out of range. That means that the, the normal health marker is, is either you know above or beyond where it should be, and it's out of range. That's the medical term. And we use ballistic cardiography as the underlying sort of science behind what we're doing, but it's all AI models. And uh, and we can tell you how your pet is feeling physically and emotionally. And as we see these out of range values, we give you an understanding of what that means and what it pertains to and what you can do about it, right? I think a lot of wearables give data for the sake of data, but it's like, okay, so how does how is this helpful to me or in this equation to me and my pet? And so we're giving that next step and then we're connecting you to a service or a product 
which forms our own platform play or ecosystem play that I felt I lacked in my post life in the media industry. This is very interesting, and I'm sure pet owners will find this very valuable and useful. And you were able to raise 3.7 million uh, for for the company. Uh, what do you believe were the primary factors that enabled you to secure this funding? Yes, yeah, so we raised about seven million. I think uh, the amount you just mentioned was the last kind of uh, seed extension round. I think what one needs to grasp when it comes to longevity, which is what we're doing ultimately, we're a data company. We're not a hardware company or a wearable business. We're actually a data business that chugs through a lot of data, explains what it means and give these next step recommendations. And a lot of that is using artificial intelligence. Um, and so what one needs to understand as an investor is it's gonna take time because it's AI, which is a rather new industry. Some people can debate that, but longevity is a very fresh and new opportunity. And therefore, both straddling the AI, which will fuel longevity, I believe, is something that requires patience and capital. And so it's going to take some time. So you need to find investors that can that think that, okay, the next decade in pet care will be transformed by longevity initiatives. And these very initiatives will be transformed by themselves through uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning. So, so you got to find those kind of people that uh, agree to that and believe in that thesis and uh, want to back that and think that, look, we see what Gen Z and millennials, how they are um, embracing pets and how pets are part of the family. And of course, it's only natural that we want our pets to live as long as possible and as joyous and as happy as they can uh, in, in, in that life cycle. Very good. And uh, so there were many investors who who found this a suitable uh, investment and it resonated with them. So you raised approximately seven million. Where does that leave the valuation at? It's about 20 million valuation um, at the moment. Maybe oh. a bit north of that, but look, valuations are subjective um, to to the last investor, I suppose. Um, look, I think we're highly undervalued if you look at the potential of what we can do. Um, I think the way we're thinking about it is: can we go out and acquire more IP? Can we that is synergistic? Can we find other? Um, companies that can be put alongside or on top of what we're doing, uh, neural image recognition, um, where you can take a picture of a particular part of the pet or the stool of the pet, and that could be analyzed through machine learning models. Um, can we add AI-based symptom checkers uh, where you answer a bunch of questions? So it's about you know creating that holy trinity of sensor data, self-assessment, neural image recognition, giving you a very fair assumption of status quo of your beloved pet. And, you know, it's a $500 billion opportunity by 2030. This is a rapidly growing industry that has been historically very analog. So the transformation that we're seeing um, across digital tools and, and, and pet tech companies is just starting to happen, right? So, you know, historically, it's been very analog. It still is analog. There is a, a, a dire need for tools in the toolbox for the veterinary professional uh, to streamline that because there is not enough vets to go around for the, the, the search and pet ownership. And so we think there is a massive opportunity. We think that this could be a billion dollar plus um, you know, data business in, in years to come. And we're now forming a group that we call the Pet Longevity Group, which um, kind of sits with the main asset as my pet go, but then we're kind of acquiring and building around this and we're gonna raise um, a lot more money moving forward to be quite aggressive in this particular niche and space. There are opportunities for integration, as you mentioned, where where the benefits, the overall benefits would exceed the, the individual benefits of a single uh, wearable device for pets, if you will. And um, as you mentioned, the market, the market is huge. And I believe it's it's an underlooked market uh, or it's in still in its early stages, 
hasn't evolved as much as perhaps the human wearables uh, market. So what products or services exist on this market today and where do you see it heading? So I think we're, you know, anywhere from 10 to 15 years behind the human side in terms of wearables. I think we see that there are champions that are popping up like a Whoop or an Aura that can compete with Apple and, and the big incumbents. Um, and, you know, as a matter of fact, you know, Whoop and Aura has become, you know, billion dollar businesses. But it's data companies. They're doing something quite niche from what an Apple Watch would do, which the Apple Watch is still something where it pops up with your emails all the time. These devices are focusing on your sleep patterns and how you can improve sleep and, you know, how you can look at strain and when to exercise again. So they're they're more targeted and specific. But look, I see tons of people wearing all of them, right? A ring, a whoop strap and an Apple Watch. So, you know, there is a market for 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 everything, I guess. In terms of the pet space being so drastically behind, we sort of said, Look, most of the players that are wearables in the pet space are GPS trackers. So they track the whereabouts and location. We don't do that. We track the vitals and we have a longevity program that's built in. So every day you get tasked, we tell you, you know, things around nutrition, around hygiene, around, you know, preventative care, um, next step recommendations, you know, health screenings, all of these different things. If you do these in a timely manner, you should have a healthier pet, a happier pet, and a pet that could live a longer life. And so I think very much is going to gravitate towards the whoop and the auras. And we're going to see more of that in the pet space too, and less of the GPS trackers that has historically been the devices that people have used. Interesting insights. And you mentioned that you had started um, another company before, and now you're working on this. So you have a good experience in entrepreneurship, and there are many young viewers who are watching us today. And I believe if, if you could give them some advice about starting their own company, that would be greatly valuable. Yeah, look, so to all the viewers that are thinking about uh, becoming an entrepreneur and starting their own venture, my um, advice is do it, regardless of what it is. Do it as early as you can because you've got nothing to lose. You can always stay at, at your parents' house if you have parents. If you don't have that, maybe a friend's house or somewhere else. But um, the younger you are, the easier it is to take the learnings and move on if it fails. And failure is only natural. It happens and it's part of the equation, but that's how you grow. That's how you learn. That's how you move forward. You might start another venture. You might not. You might go back to the corporate world and that is fine, but you gave it a try. You gave it your all. So my my advice is don't be um, overthinking it. Just try to do it. Also try to find a mentor, someone who's older and you can scour LinkedIn for that, but someone who understands the sector you want to go into. Maybe you want to digitalize this particular sector, but someone who is in the bread and butter business of the sector, an older person, ask for, can you be my mentor? Can you be my advisor? A lot of these people would do it out of goodwill. They might not ask for anything in return. You could always offer some uh, stock options to them if they are willing to spend you know, an hour every week or a few hours every week or a couple of hours every month, depending on, you know, who they are. Um, And you can find multiple advisors in different areas that can kind of help you along because you may be inexperienced. So that's an easy way to get it right. There are tons of digital tools that are out there for free today. You can use these resources to get, you know, servers at almost no cost to start with, or domain names are super cheap. Don't go and buy the most expensive .com because it doesn't matter these days in terms of rankings and all of these different things in terms of SEO. You know, there is tons of stuff out there. So there is resources, there is the mentors, you know, don't overthink it, dive into it, and you learn throughout that journey. So, um, you know, risk and reward, that's how it is. Absolutely. Great tips. And uh, I would uh, add to, to also focus on the needs in the market and, and be needs driven in a way. Uh, but really great tips. Find a mentor. Uh, don't be afraid of experimenting and failing quickly and then 
getting back on track. Really great advice there. Thank you so much, Richard Nielsen, the founder and CEO of MyPetGo. Thank you again for all of those insights and sharing uh, the story behind your company. And we look forward to seeing you again here very soon. Thank you. Appreciate the time.